Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Hearthstone 4 Kaiser and Jeremy. Let's continue on from where we last left off. So last time we invaded the Netherlands because they are... They deserved it, let's just put it that way. And then aside from that, the entire country and the entire empire at large is kind of collapsing. Which, I mean, isn't... is, is not good. But is it that bad either? Yeah, no, it is. A visit to the Ruhr. The staff of the Chancellor has drafted a proposal for Schleicher, uh, an official visit to the Ruhr to alleviate some of the tensions personally. This would involve several speeches to trade union representatives in the region, and a final public one in Essen, where the Chancellor is uh, to promise labor law reform and state protection for strikers who are peacefully returned to work. This would strengthen the position as the Red General, and pave a uh, way forward for peaceful resolution of the general strike. Well... Okay, so good impression, 60% chance of good impression, 30% uh, is meant for protest, and a 10% chance we might get assassinated. Let's take it, roll the dice! We'll find out. Landers Maloney is nice, uh, but I don't, I don't like the color. I think the color is nice. Wait, wait! Flanders Wallonia? Were you not just Belgium? I thought we named you Belgium again. After the Franco-German War of 1870-1871, the Sudan Tag was established to celebrate the victory over Sedan. Hey, give me that that five political power. It's really, really going to make a big difference for us, right? Also, I failed that because I was five points off. That's cool. I, I love I love having nothing. <laughs> 45, 42, 50. I, I've noticed I can, I can get stability really easily, but the investment is kind of a fucking pain in the ass. So 15, 2,000, 2750. Which is nowhere close to the amount of cards that we need. Okay, so. I guess we need... Because what do you do? You are st less debt. I guess we probably should be doing more of these focuses so that we can get more cards. Okay, we've been met with protest. The uh, Chancellor's visit to the Ruhr was not left a good impression upon the population. As Schleicher and his cabinet note, the situation in the Ruhr has grown increasingly radicalized, and each speech made the uh, Rhenish cities uh, met with protests and demands for to resign. Due to growing security concerns, the visit was cut short, and meeting with trade union leaders had been cancelled. Uh, the Chancellor swiftly returned to Berlin. Very cool. 15%. What are we at right now for the uh, for this crisis, by the way? 60 out of 100? That's fine. That's That's good. And then you're going to make you go by another 10. Uprising in Ukraine. The Black Monday economic crisis being throughout the world. Uh, situation particularly harsh in the Ukrainian state. Uh, with the country's Ukrainian economy buckling under its own weight. So, Ukraine. As long as you don't go socialist, I'm kind of fine with whatever you do. As long as you stay pro-me, that's okay. I, I, I don't care what else you do. What path are we doing? Um, I haven't, I, I didn't decide on a path, um, prior to beginning this. I let the, uh, I let chat vote a few times on which, uh, option we do if we're going to side with the SPD or the, the right wing. They, they decided to join the SPD, but I feel like we might end up just getting, like, the fail state, because I've been fucking this up really badly. <laughs> okay. Turn's been complete. Sympathy strikes in Silesia. Very cool. Can I get more cards? You give me one card. Take all of this, because why not? Give me an extra card. Change crisis type. You know, play all the cards. That's just, why not? They're buns. Buns are friend the press. Sympathy strikes in Silesia. After some time during which they assess the situation and then witness the establishment of a right-wing government in Prussia, the Polish workers in the industrial upper Silesia region has joined the ongoing strike. The motion to pledge themselves to the goal of the rural workers was uh, taken as a uh, collaboration between the two main Polish labor unions and the German Empire. Um, and that's closer with the Socialist uh, and the SPD. Dozens of the workers in the coal mines and steel mills of Upper Silesia have emptied their workplaces and their peers in the Ruhr have joined their German comrades. The decision by the uh, Polish trade unions has inflamed the uh, generally uh, tepid relation between the Germans and the Poles in the ethnically uh, mixed Upper Silesian region. The uh, German workers have generally refused to associate with the strike, and this move has made them even less likely to join forces. This has been criticized by the chairman of the ZZP, Josef Reimer, in the uh, press organization of the Union, describing this as the use of ethnic tensions as a tool 
uh, by the developing Prussian dictatorship to divide the workers in their struggle uh, for rights. So. Well, you won't get a fail state yet, I think. Just the wrong route. I mean, as long as we're not, like, failing, that's okay, right? Uh, okay, who do you want to target? We still want to target left and... S okay, I can only do one? Never mind, that's fine. I'm more worried about Black Monday. Make sure not to get that too high. You probably want to get the federal income tax cards. Federal intact. Okay, where, where is that in here? Price controls, relief cards, public works, man, the high castle, income taxes. Copy the card for the cut add to the deck. Pistol austerity. 42 days. Let, let's go with massive public works. What is her debt, by the way? 161%. I didn't know I'm fucking Japan. Okay. Um, maybe we should control the Mill African Navy. Maybe that makes sense, right? Just take on more financial burden of having an entire second navy. Okay, the strikes in Luxembourg, which have already been uh, very vulnerable to the syndicate's agitation and mobilization, I made rails in a small stage chamber of deputies, located near France, on the frontier before the syndicalist bloc, and highly industrialized with powerful unions and local socialist organizations. It has been highly anxious as a, a possible socialist revolt since 1920. Prime Minister Josep Beck, a representative of the Luxembourger Party of the Right, has proposed a law to curtail the growth of socialism in Luxembourg, and a law for defense of the social and political order. Opponents of the law, however, are taken to calling it the muzzle law, or that German word which would give the uh, government the power to dissolve any other organization believed to be a threat to the Constitution. I right, thank you for the $20 uh, donation. I do really appreciate it. Thank you a lot, Zany. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Okay. Well, let, let's see what happens here. We're, we're so fucked. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so over. It's never been more over than it is right now, man. I will say they have made... Completion time, never. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Our entire military organization just doesn't even work. That's fine. But I will say, I'm glad that they made Germany more difficult. Because I will. I think Germany was way, way too easy beforehand. Ger Costa Rica requested German garrison? Sure, fuck it. Why not? Just do that there. I'm, I am liking the update. I I'm not very good at it. <laughs> but I remember before... I mean, before the update... Um, I remember I did a campaign where I, uh, where we, where we did Germany. Anybody remember where we played Germany and we made every other country in Europe go syndicalist? Uh, and then we had to fight all of them at the same time. That one we did win. I mean, we did the back of the Austrians, which maybe kind of cheapened it a little bit. But as Germany before, you can basically single-handedly fight all of Europe at the same time. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad they made it more difficult to just... I think Germany was way too powerful before. And I'm, I'm glad that they've... Uh, because you were unable to contain the radicalism of the right cover of the medium, your government fell. Yeah, okay. <laughs> cool. The beginning of the World General Strike, the greatest challenge to the political establishment of the Empire since 1925, ultimately proved uh, to be Shutter's undoing. The Red General's plot, as suspected, was to keep the strike going for as long as possible in order to pressure the establishment parties into supporting him as the only option to prevent cynicalism. Yet, he was unable to handle the situation. The DKP and the DVLP joined forces in the Black-White-Red alliance and took advantage of the situation. To the Kaiser reactionary advisors in the royal court, Kuno von Westrott and Yultrich von Hassan convinced him that the United Conservative government will, all, uh, will immediately defeat the strikers with force and put an end to their syndicalist plotting. This proved much more attractive than the uh, Reichshandler's vague promises of national security, and uh, though Shudderitz fought to uh, the best of his ability, he was forced to resign. His role in history will thus be that of a mere interim period, an independent who led Germany for a few brief months before uh, handling the reins over to the government of Edward von Kletscht. Shaijin, an independent appointed to mediate between the two powerful coalition partners. For the first time in decades, a true conservative government leads Germany again. Years of parliamentarianism, liberalism, and reform could not hold back the reaction of the German conservatives, and they returned with a vengeance. I'm sure nothing bad could possibly happen with this. Okay. 
Because you weren't able to contain the radicalism of the root conf within the medium, your government fell, 50% stability lost, 60% consumer goods, we get a new ruling party. Okay. We got a new government. We're now the uh, paternal autocrats, who is even less popular than the other guys, so that's cool. Okay, the conservative revolution. Decades ago, um, Samlung's politique, i.e. bringing certain factions together by establishing a strong front against the emerging political left and for imperialist interests, has been an important tool of the state and the Kaiser as a bulwark. But times have changed. And ever since the Kaiser himself turned unreliable and more and more of a weak puppet of internationalist parliamentarianism, uh, he and his government became the new target of the very same policy they once pursued. Uh, Samlung politique against the state. What didn't work out under Alfred von Strippitz in the 1910s and under Wolfgang Kopp and uh, George Wilhelm Schlitt in the 1920s has now finally become a reality under the leadership of party chairman Ulrich von Halsel uh, during one of Germany's darkest hours. The time of aimless modernization and uh, the uh, Slatterist uh, pseudo-left experiments are now over. Now, a truly national front has brought down the rotten power structures of old. Hopefully once and for all, the conservative revolution is imminent. While the Black-White-Red Alliance is a diverse coalition, a collection of all kinds of right-leaning groups, ranging from the harmless middle-class populists and the modern conservatives to far-right industrialists and the Volkswitz, a national revolutionary uh, German fatherland party, and the predominantly agrarian aristocratic German conservative party, uh, maintain the upper hand. Select key ministries of the future government will be split between them, but the nominal leadership of the coalition, the imperial chancellorship, will go to a non-partisan compromise candidate who enjoys respect upon uh, practically the entire German right, the famous Edward von Kletz-Scheibzin, um, a longtime uh, conservative uh, Prussian uh, civil service official and one of the sharpest critics of uh, Schleicher. Uh, it is expected that the uh, leading role will um, obfuscate fascism within the rightist front. So, who's in our coalition? we got the authoritarian Democrats and the national populists. So, we got 11... So, what is it? 11, 20, 21... 30, 37%? I mean, that's not so... It's not so bad. It could be It could be worse. So. 80 out of 100. Increased by 25 points every day. We bypassed the man in the high castle. So... Apparently these... Do these not get cut off? Not... Okay, so because the Black Monday card game is still active. Okay, so this is still on here. Uh, we've unlocked... Yeah, Man in the High Castle. Escalate Suppression. A lot of, a lot of cool stuff is about to happen here in Germany now. Okay, Referendum. The Chamber of Deputies in Luxembourg passed the infamous, uh... Malkur gets with a majority vote. However, this is not the end of the story. North protests to, in the, to the streets in the small western state. The many boss resonations nation and the revocation of the anti-democratic muzzle law. Okay. More stability. Negative 41%. Do escalate the suppression. Well, how long has this got? 15 days? Well, I mean, we still got the card game. Thing is, we don't have, like, any good cards. All our cards suck. Intensity will go up a little bit more. Plus one cards go into the deck. The crisis will win the game. I, I love. I just love the line. The crisis will win the game round. I don't know why that's so funny to me. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll after we're done um, the public works, we will escalate suppression. Just just crush them underneath all our, our heels. Ironically, now that Charles has fallen, the very same patriots that once criticized the Democratic parties for selfishness and for putting party interests above people's interests are now swooping in like vultures for the vacant state secretary post, ready to do whatever it takes to get the best for their own party. The new candidate for the foreign office was clearly found, and not surprising choice, uh, Ulrich von Hassel, chairman of the DVLP since 1929, and retired diplomat with experience in Italy, Spain, and the Commune of France, charismatic, clever, and assertive. It would be one of the first presidents in German history of an actual party politician taking over the foreign office leadership. Its effect on the uh, German foreign policy remains yet to be seen, but on the European stage, Hassel and most of his party clearly favor the Russians over the syndicalist Bach. The future will show if such policy is capable with Germany's global interest. With the foreign office gang going to the DVLP, the state secretariat for the interior is bound to go to the more governable, governmental DKP. 
Uh, party chairman Kono von Westroff remains out of the question due to his uh, affiliation with previous governments and will focus on the uh, well-established power base in the chairmanship. The choice thus fell on the more obscure candidate, the East Prussian retired government official Wilhelm von uh, Geil, a man from with a career experience in the uh, Bundesrat and the old wartime occupation zones of Eastern Europe. And with ties in agrarian uh, corporate circles, Gal might be a uh, inconspicuous man, but he has great experience and low ambition uh, ensure that he won't become a rival to party leadership. Okay, 5% more stability. We're getting some more... We're getting more stability. You should, uh, you should do the card where it opens up more cards. Okay, we'll do this one first. The card that opens up more cards. Is it one of uh, one of these ones? Oh, we can do the federal tax. Uh, we can do the federal taxes now. There's so many cards we don't have. Okay, you did that one. Fantastic. Okay, Mill Africa's giving us some rifles. That's nice because we didn't really have any. One thousand. So we need. It's always investment that's the issue. One thousand fifteen hundred. Can I change the crisis type? We could. We get a 50% bonus off of you. So let's take the 50% bonus first. And then we'll change the crisis type in case that makes one of these more efficient. It actually makes two of them more efficient. 15, 15, 30. Hey! Okay. We've, we've done this one. I'd say do Fed income taxes and the succession focus are your next uh, best two. Okay. So I think we'll take the suppression first. And then we'll do the uh, the income taxes. Okay, what, what what are we missing right now? A little bit a little bit of everything. Where's our aircraft? Are they at the very bottom down here? They are. Okay. Hogan Burke demands an economic office. As expected, DKP uh, will keep a firm grip on agricultural matters, with longtime state secretary Martin Shell uh, remaining in his position. Meanwhile, the DVLP has made its move on the economic office, and quite surprisingly for nobody else than the infamous uh, Alfred Hungberg, uh, Hugenberg is one of the most controversial German political figures, and not without reason. Few politicians can brag about having been involved in the foundation of two of the most influential German far right organizations, the extra parliamentary pan German League of 1890, and the Fatherland Party, which is now the most powerful arm of the ultra nationalist and parliamentary politics. Uh, in 1917, and few can claim to have gained control over one of the most powerful conglomerates of media outlets, heavy industrial works, and eastern settlement agencies over such a short time span. Hugenberg's fingers are everywhere like an old, encompassing octopus. And yet the man uh, with his iconic mustache has found himself increasingly isolated uh, from within his own party in recent years. Although Hugenberg still is the second chairman of the DVLP, his power base seems from, uh, stems from the legacy of the 1920s, when he was considered the party's absolute economic expert under the ultra-right leadership of Wolfgang Kopp and uh, George Wilhelm uh, Schill. Okay, so what do we have here? Ever since the defeat in the DVLP party election in 1929, he's biding his time. Do you believe he has given up ambitions? Okay. Do we give him a little bit of influence and see if that will appease him? Or try... You know what? Let him... Lasting battle come of this, right? Okay. Canned fruit? Let's fucking go. Are you trying to... Wait, okay. I thought he was going to try to take, like, take a second office with this man and his wild mustache. Soon after the appointment, the Secretary Cemetery, uh, Alfred Hugenberg reached out to the government, offering uh, Gustav Hartz as a potential Secretary of Labor. Uh, he's a member of the DVLP and a German National Union of Commercial Employees, a white-collar trade union with considerable influence among right-wing political spectrums. He is uh, much more famous, or infamous, for errors of the German social policy, uh, his work in which he calls for the abolition of the Bismarckian social insurance system in replacement with a mandatory personal savings. No, you, you, you've gotten your power. We'll kind of try to keep you in check this way. Brazil seeks investment. Sure, man. Let, let's go. And Huey Long's been elected as president. Yeah, so Huey Long. Yeah, he's now a national populist. So. Fight the anarchist. We'll kind of see what Huey Long uh, gets up to now. So I know they. I think he has, they have some new focus trees, or at least a little bit of a reworked focus tree. How long are you, by the way? 28 days. Yeah, can we just arrest everybody? 
Okay, so this should succeed. What what hand are we on? I don't I, I don't actually know. Issuing money. These are the current cards in our hands. I understand that bit. And now there's a war in there's a war in Spain. Can I send volunteers? I can send four. Where are my tanks? I'm going to send my two tank divisions. And then two infantry. We're going to send you to Spain. We're going to send our volunteers. We're going to focus mainly on CNT. Because again, if the Carlos win, they will still join the Entente. And that is still somewhat favorable to us. So I'm willing, I'm willing to take that. And also, you guys need a new invasion plan. Push away this way. All units just deploy in, uh, in Hess. That sounds fine to me. And the Belgrade Pact is now beginning to form. That's fine. That's, that's cool. What, whatever they want to do, they can do. By the way, we're still, we're still in 36. Oh my lord. Okay, but anyways, it is going to be a good time for us to end off this episode. So if you enjoyed, thumbs up. Not enjoy, close thumbs down. If you want to see more, subscribe and goodbye.